as I welcome you all now, I need to be respectful of the traditional custodian who nurtured this spiritual land and cared for its people. I would also like to pay my respects to the memory of the elders that have passed on and to acknowledge the many elders who participated in activities. Can I also acknowledge all of you? I would now like to extend that respect to every one of you. I would now like to officially welcome you all. So once again, it's Gava, Buliagu, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys. It is our, it is our custom to acknowledge the traditional owners who nurtured this land and cared for it. I now welcome each and every one of you to this beautiful land of the Kamilaroi people. Yama, Yamaday, Kamilaroi, Walla I be I Ganayani, Winagala Yalambu Mare, Mayumala Nale Dawan, which means, Welcome all, you are on Kamilaroi land. Think of our ancestors who cared for the land. Gagi, Gadabal, Yarada, have a wonderful day. Gaba Nindu, thank you. As you may be aware, this year's NAIDOG theme is always was, always will be. Recognising that the First Nations people have occupied and cared for this continent for over 65,000 years. What are your thoughts or ideas around the theme? I like the theme and it's been around for a long time. It was one of the original themes that I originally heard where there was marches and marches and everything else that went with it, fighting for our land, for our land and our culture, which included not only land, not only land but the sea, because the people on the coast, that's what they survived on, was the, was the seas. In, inland, where, where I'm originally from, um, they survived, they survived on, on animals, on the, on the plants, which they used as, as um, fruit, fruit and vegetables. And um, this was taught to them and handed down in their culture along with the language. Um, always was, always will be. I think it sort of speaks for itself. Um, I had a comment yesterday from a non-Indigenous person about what that title meant, which sort of took me back a bit because I, I, I suppose that shows there's still a little bit of a gap there between that understanding between um, non-Aboriginal and Aboriginal people and that connection that we have, that it's always was Aboriginal land and always will be. Like we'll always be, we've always been here for thousands of years and we'll always will be. The theme always was, always will be, um, is something that uh, resonates so well with me because we've always been here. We've never been anywhere else. Um, we're a part of the environment. Um, our languages are everywhere. Um, we're made up of the past. We'll be a part of the future. It's all, we always was and always will be. There's just it's, it needs to be shared with the wider, wider community and the wider world because people are still disbelieving that we as Gomoroi Murray people or Aboriginal people are the oldest living people on the planet. I think I like the theme because it only tells the truth and that's what the theme is about and it's about time this country actually learned the truth and I mean all aspects of the truth. Well, I reckon the theme that this year is a very good theme because, uh, you know, in our Kamilaroi culture or with any culture, that it was always was and it will always be because that is very powerful because, uh, you know, it's a learning history for everyone. And I'd like to see this learning history be gazetted into schools so that our 
uh, next generation that is coming through can learn it all and then they can carry on with it. When you think about our history and past, how do you feel we should celebrate our culture and recognise First Nations people? Well, it's been generations and generations and like I said, we've always been taught the history from, from the American history and everywhere else, but we were never ever taught the Aboriginal history within the schools. And I think it's about time that it was made compulsory, not a, su not a subject that should be at the back of the list. Because I had to fight for my daughters to learn Aboriginal studies in, in Sydney because it wasn't compulsory. Important that we sort of highlight and pay respect to our elders. Um, I think the theme is very reflective of what they've been through and they're still here. Um, they suffered a lot um, for us to be where we are today, but also celebrating the fact that we are still here and we're so rich in knowledge. That gap is closing, there's so much respect now and there's so much culture there that we can share with the young ones. And it's the young ones that really are wanting to sort of like... Are proud. Yeah, are proud of are their proud. culture and looking yeah. for that connection. Yeah. And, and it's really strong. allowed to be proud. Yeah. In, in, in my days, we weren't allowed to be proud and, and we're so grateful for the elders to, be allow, to allow our children to be proud. Um, I, I, I also would like to add to that, Jody, is that um, we can't change the history, but we can change our knowledge of the history, acknowledge the history is so important. For me, it's a lived experience. I live it every day. Um, it, it's who I am, and it's about sharing knowledge of the past, not to reconcile, but to share an understanding of the atrocities which occurred here in this country and by sharing our knowledge with others they do not ever have a comeback to say that they did not know and then what they do with that knowledge is then up to them. Well I don't think we should have a week, a NAIDOC week. We should, every year should be NAIDOC for us because uh, our culture goes back so far and you know we don't just turn off, turn into Aboriginal for a week. We're continually Aboriginal. Well, recognising the First Nation people, like in my growing up and time, we never ever knew in the early stages of our life. We was never ever told about our culture, about our history, because our elders and fathers and mothers they were never allowed to speak it and uh, that was the sad tale of it but uh, then as we sort of got older we sort of uh, you know they started leaking out some of the words and uh, it really came to us then that uh, there was an history of this culture and thing. And it's the great history. And to be the oldest history in the world, which makes us so proud of. When NADOC first started off, it started off at a very low pace and uh, there was nothing much. But today, the march has extended to a very, you know, large crowd. And it was great to walk up the street and show how proud you was, but uh, celebrating it, and uh, we celebrate it with uh, a big day in the park, and uh, that is one of the main things. The celebration is good, it's outstanding, and I, uh, I'm so proud of it, and I think in the times to come, in the future, that our children can do the same thing too. Over time, what changes have you seen regarding our cultural connection to our land? Just the respect, there's a lot more acknowledging the Aboriginal people like right through services. There's that, that respect there and the importance of Aboriginal people 
um, running and owning programs or mm. in any sort of um, field or area, education, health, um, there's still long, long ways to go. We've known for over 50 years, we've had reports of the gaps in our health and in disparities in healthcare. Um, what I see in the last 10 years is in health, um, how our elders are now leading our healthcare. Um, I work in health and um, our managers and um, health know the, the importance of having our elders lead our care and um, the importance of endorsing our, our care and ensuring that we've got culturally safe services. Um, and that in the future will we'll start closing the gap because our people will go to health. And that's um, that uh, ha having a healthy person is going to have a healthy um, land and it's going to have a healthy culture. I think all the kids should, or the younger generation, because because our generation was one that was not taught in the schools. That we used, to, I used to sit in the classroom and, and not say a word because they'd be talking about the settlements and everything else. And I sat there like a little mouse and said nothing. I was very very shy kid at school because of it. And um, it's something now that the kids learned learned some some language stuff at school but there's not it's not in all the schools so I'd like I'd like all the kids to learn their culture all parts of it and be taught by the elders like they used to be I think I think uh, excursions into the cultural areas should be compulsory to go along with with their learning because it is it's the only way they're going to learn is the kids I believe the cultural connection to the land has always been there, but it has obviously been broken. And it's been broken in the sense that what we need to do is to constantly remind others who may not have been unfortunate that the connection back to country is not just going bush, but it's about knowing bush. It's about being literate of country and being numerate of country it's about reconnecting back and knowing stories of country. It's been knowing, when I say numerate, I mean knowing the seasons, knowing the sciences, knowing um, how, to, how to read the layout of the land in terms of when you were, go to get particular bush foods and when things are in season and when things aren't in season. And it's about knowing the stories that reconnect back to trees or back to the land and everything that is living within that community. It's, it's important because every single thing on country and within, you know, within the sky, within the Gunagalaga, it's, it's, it has a story and it has a place. And we need to know that it's an ent entity. And I think what's happened historically in the past with um, the, Australia's history, they haven't recognised or they haven't acknowledged that we have always been here. And they're hoping that we will forget and that we will go away, but we can't forget when our footprints are embedded within the earth that we come from. And I think we need to reshare our stories and we need to reconnect and we need to bring people along with us who would love to know our stories so that it's a shared history. You know, I've walked with archaeologists I've walked with national parks and wildlife and I've done that for many and many years. And the land to me is very important. It's so close to me because why I say it's so close is Mother Earth. She's our mother, we know her as a mother and she has made that land very, very close to our hearts. And I'm so proud that I go out and I walk the land and I love it. I feel that spirit is there. And uh, that is why, you know, I'm not only just an ordinary elder, I'm a spiritual elder too. I've been given that title. And uh, it makes me feel so proud to be part of the land. Like back in times, a lot of people used to say the Aboriginal people own the land, but that's not true. We do not own the land. The land owns us. 
What are your hopes and dreams for our future with regards to our culture and connection to our land? And as well as your wishes for our future de generations. My hopes and dreams. Well, I s that's a hard one. Um, I think as everyone's hopes and dreams would be is that we're walking together as one, respecting each other's differences. Um, yeah, and just valuing the difference in all cultures, um, but specifically acknowledging that Aboriginal people have a wealth of knowledge and like I'm proud of my, the culture that I've been raised with and how strong and connected I am with being a fairer skinned Aboriginal person, but I'm still really strong in culture and I've passed that on to my children as well. Um, so that's one thing I think I'm really proud of and I look forward to, because it's so strong in our Tamworth community at the moment, like there's so much culture and knowledge there and it's very powerful and yeah, it makes you really proud when you see these young people who get up and dance or they're creating things and seeing all the stuff that's going on community and working together. Walking together in um, how diverse our culture is, um, is a really important thing and the elders are very, very strong in understanding of our diverse because they actually lived it. They've lived um, the history, they've walked into history and they've actually protected us um, from, from what has happened in history. So my hopes and dreams are um, for a better future, um, a, very, a, a safer future for all, for all our people and for my family and my children. Well, mainly the future generations, I'd like them to actually not just go out bush, but actually learn all about our culture from our prominent elders. That, and from the, the history that's been passed down and acknowledge the fact that while we're here, we are survivors. And, you know, watching TV is nothing. Go out and talk to the, talk to the land, listen to the trees, listen to the land. Because the land talks to you, really. You know, you've got to get back to that stage. And the kids need to do that. Not on an iPhone or a game. Go back out there and see what is really happening to this country and listen to it. Uh, listen to your elders. Go back and go back and listen to your grandparents. Listen to your elders and listen to their stories of how they grew up and what they grew up with. And hopes for the future is that we will live in a world where we are acknowledged and respected as and our story is shared and people learn to understand that Australia's history is based on our history and that everywhere we go in, in future in terms of my great-grandchildren and my grandchildren that will come after me, that their first language will be the, land, the language of the land. So for my mob, like the, the Gomorrah mob, I'd like that, that be spoken, the signage, everything be there. And then their grandfather's um, language be also known and to be shared. So whatever country you are on, I would just love to hear our voices being spoken as we do today when we go anywhere and hear other voices and other nationalities. I, uh, as you can see on my shirt, that I'm very tied up with a special school, and that's the uh, Oxley Vale Public School. And uh, I teach the culture out there. We teach, uh, we do got language classes out there now. The kids are so proud of it. They greet me of a morning in the language, and they, when I'm walking away of evening, they'll greet me the same thing. They'll say, in the morning, they'll say, hello, Uncle Guru. And then I'll be evening, they'll say, yellow, Uncle Guru. So they all call me uncle, but I'd like to see, be brought into the curriculum to uh, have the children learn every part of our culture and every part of our language because we are the oldest in the world and that should be taught to the to our future generation that are going to come through i love it and i know the kids love it 
and they're the ones that are going to come through next and they're the ones that's got to carry on the teaching. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us about your own personal journey? For example, where you grew up. For experiences you've had. I was born on a little Aboriginal mission called Wallolo, which is situated outside of Weirus Creek and Corindai. Corindai was my home town. And uh, this, I'd done my school in that uh, Wallolo school. Then I continued on into Corindai, where I'd done my high school. And uh, I only went there till I was 14 years and nine months and the headmaster said to me, if you can find a job, it's, you can leave. And which, that is what i done. But, uh, you know, with my experience, then I uh, worked around Karuna, all around the countryside there. I was a, a farmer, a, sheer, a wool presser, tractor drivers, whatever you could name, railway worker. So I'd done just about every job. But uh, my journey through my uh, employment was wonderful and I enjoyed every bit of it. Then when I moved to Tamworth, I uh, started to learn what our culture was all about and things. And that is when National Parks got in touch with me and asked me, would I go out on some walk the lands and try and find some sites for them. I learned all about the sites. I walked the land and I loved, I had that beautiful feeling when I walked the land. I could feel that the spirits were walking with me. And uh, it was beautiful. And uh, when I learned most of the culture, that is when I started to, to teach it to other people. I love it, I love the land, and I love the next lot of generations that's going to come through. Dad's grand, great-granddaughter, she was going to one of the schools in Sydney and they, they were talking about cultural stuff and she, they asked them to create some dance that they think was important. And she created this dance about the serpent and about the stolen generation. And they made Dad the special guest. And this was at a, at a um, educational program thing, that, a concert thing that all the public primary schools were doing. And it was a concert. And um, after I finished work, I had to wait, go down to Seymour Centre and wait for my father to turn up because he was one of the special guests. I suppose growing up in Tamworth, um, things have changed a lot, which for the better. Um, growing up as a younger person, it was really difficult for Aboriginal people. And um, just as a fairer skinned Aboriginal person, it was uh, constantly having to justify who I was culturally in that. But um, that's changed now, which is really, really good. Um, my grandparents lived on the Aboriginal Camp and Reserve here in Tamworth, so I've got really strong ties and links to that. And recently I'm meeting a family member, an auntie of my grandmother's, who I didn't even know was alive or existed. And once again, I was part of the Stolen Generations, my family. So it's those ties and we're bringing her back home on country, which is really, really important. So that's really exciting. Um, and the fact that she gets to come home um, after being away for 70 odd years is it's pretty amazing, so that's going to be quite an emotional time and yeah, yeah it's very, very special and it's those things that um, really connect you to who you are culturally and as an Aboriginal person. So, mm. yeah. um, I was born in Corindai, but my mum was um, born here. She's a part of Tamworth, so the, me being drawn back to this land is really important for my connection, but also the past trauma through for my family, um, the trauma that we've had to have. I've lost a lot of my family through through, through the intergenerational trauma, um, but f for me to be drawn back here to Tamworth, um, the healing, the land, and um, the elders here. Um, have, have um, helped me heal. If it wasn't for um, my place here, I would have been probably in an in institution. Is that true? For it's what good to happened? have that though, so people realise the impact yeah. it does have on you. Yeah. Like, oh, because yeah. I 
grew up watching the impact that had on my father. Yes. Um, he, like those stolen generation, it was such a huge, and then it sort of passed down. It's like that transgenerational trauma that Absolutely. gets passed down onto yes. you. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people will say, oh, they need to get over it or why, but it's, you can't. It's sort of, it's there, it's raw. Um, but it, I suppose it all, for me personally, it always come back, comes back to that connection of country. Yeah. Like the dirt, like it's our mother earth. You've got Gunima, his mother earth. It's the water that cleanses us. It's the fires that keep us warm. And it's all those sort of elements that make yeah. us whole as an Aboriginal yeah. like Except culture, it, as yeah. a culture. It's not just body. one element that yeah. makes us who we are. There's so many different elements, family like country, like spirituality, law, there's so many different things that make up our culture and who we are as Aboriginal people. Yeah. And yeah, so that. And like I had an uncle that used to walk along the beach on a moon, moonlight night and sing to the dolphins and they'd round up the fish and bring the fish into him. He never carried a line or anything. He walked out barefoot in a three-piece suit as they did in the whole days. And sang in language and the dolphins rounded the fish up and brought him into the beach. He'd come back with a, a feed, you know, things like that. Uh. I'm very, very fortunate to know my story. I'm extremely fortunate to know my place of belonging. I'm extremely grateful for growing up in a family where we were loved we were acknowledged and we were, we were taught um, about who we are and where we come from. Um, grew up in a very small town in, in Narrabri. Um, traditional owners recognise as, tr Trindles are recognised as traditional owners because of the continual existence to that place. And to this day, my brothers are still living and my auntie and my, my cousins still live in country on Narrabri. Here in Tamworth I'm still living and breathing and working on country so it's important that that connection is there and it's important that we be proud of who we are and it's important for our young ones to ask questions and no question is ever ever silly because someone else may be thinking the same thing and someone will have that answer for you. So ask questions, be proud of who you are and have a voice and stand up for inequity in, in this world regardless of race, creed or colour.